Welcome to Science Easy Tech Channel. In this video, we are going to discuss about factorial design which comes under through experimental design. So, this was taken from Unit 4 in Nursing Research and Statistics. This video is useful for BSc Nursing students as well as post basic BSc Nursing students. Before moving on to the topic, if you are new to Science Easy Tech channel, just take a moment to subscribe our channel and also to press the notification bell icon in order to get connected with our latest updates. Let's move on to the content what we are going to discuss in this through experimental design. Already I have posted videos on nursing research and statistics. You can watch our channel playlist for more videos. With regard to through experimental design, already I have posted on Solomon four group design and randomized block design i have given the link in description box suggested end card and i card or you can watch our channel playlist nursing research and statistics for bsc nursing students so in this video we are going to discuss about factorial design what is factorial design so in factorial design the researcher manipulates two or more independent variables simultaneously to observe their effects on the dependent variable. So, in factorial design, the researcher will be manipulating two or more variables. Okay, the researcher manipulates two or more independent variables and observe their effects on the dependent variable. So, here in this design itself, you can test many hypotheses okay so this design is useful when there are more than two independent variables and which are called these variables are called as factors which are to be tested so in one design itself you can test multiple hypotheses in a single experiment itself so in factorial experiments subjects are assigned at randomly okay whenever it is an experimental design we have to follow three things what are those three things one is random assignment of subjects next is manipulation or treatment next is you should have a control group so in factorial experiments also what the subjects are assigned to random specific combination of conditions are assigned in different groups based on a specific combination of conditions so randomly you are assigning the subjects in different conditions so for example I will be uh, discussing two examples in this video. So, one example, a researcher wants to observe the effect of two different protocols of mouth care on prevention of VAP that is ventilator associated pneumonia when performed at different frequencies in a day. Okay, so this design is called as factorial design because you are checking more than one single hypothesis. So, several hypotheses can be tested at a single time. So, this factorial design is what you are having various types of factorial design. So, 2 into 2 design and 2 into 3 designs are the common designs applicable okay two factors into two factors design or two factors into three factor design is most commonly used more than that combination is very very rare okay so the first number we can consider as alpha the first factor we can consider as alpha and the second factor we can consider as beta for example in the above example itself the different uh, mouth care solutions can be considered as what alpha the duration of or the frequency of the um, treatment protocol is considered as what beta so let me show this example see here alpha is what one factor then beta is what one factor alpha is nothing but the protocols on mouth care so uh, beta is what frequency of mouth care so the protocols of mouth care here in alpha one you are having what chlorhexidine in alpha 2 you are having saline alpha 1 you are having chlorhexidine mouthwash solution alpha 2 you are having what saline mouthwash solution so frequency of mouth care so you will be giving for fourth hourly sixth hourly eighth hourly so the frequency of mouth care you will be giving for what fourth hourly sixth hourly eighth hourly okay so this combinations okay so first cell what you are giving first you are giving chlorhexidine that is alpha 1 um, 
beta 1 means chlorhexidine mouthwash is given for what is given for fourth hourly that is alpha 1 beta 1 next is alpha 1 beta 2 means chlorhexidine mouthwash has been given sixth hourly every six hours once you used to give then alpha 1 beta 3 means chlorhexidine mouthwash is given for eight hourly okay so this is what alpha 1 beta 1 saline alpha 2 beta 1 means saline is given in for fourth hourly next is saline mouthwash is given for sixth hourly that is in alpha 2 beta 2 next is saline mouthwash is given for eighth hourly okay so alpha 2 beta 3 so in this way the combinations you can give and here the subjects are randomly assigned in this six differences so 1 2 3 4 5 6 okay so you can test which is effective so one group will be acting as a control group for the other for example chlorhexidine group will be acting as a control for saline group and vice versa okay so next to what we have to see one more example i have told so let me discuss with this example does auditory stimulations have a more beneficial effect on the development of premature infants than tactile stimulation see does auditory stimulation have have a more beneficial effect than tactile or touch stimulation on the development of premature infants so how so the here the independent variable is what yes the independent variable so in previous example the independent variable water mouthwash solutions are normal and chlorhexidine but here what is the independent variable yes auditory stimulation is one independent variable and tactile stimulation is one independent variable so here what you are going to see the dependent variable is the effect of weight gain the how much the um, premature infant has has gained has progressed in his or her weight as well as the cardiac responses uh, the heart response okay the cardiac response of the child you will be going to see as a dependent variable so here what and all you can check so first thing what you can check is whether auditory stimulus is effective or tactile stimulation is effective okay whether auditory is effective over tactile stimulation or tactile is effective over auditory stimulation this question we can see so next question what has been answered is does the duration of stimulation affect the infant development for example different durations you are going to give for example auditory stimulation for 15 minutes auditory stimulation for 30 minutes auditory stimulation for 45 minutes similarly tactile stimulation for 15 minutes tactile stimulation for 30 minutes and tactile stimulation for 40 minutes so which duration is effective whether auditory stimulation for 30 minutes infants are progressing better or uh, auditory stimulation if 15 minutes infants are progressing better or 45 minutes are progressing better or tactile stimulation with 30 minutes are progressing better like that each thing you can assess and uh, is auditory stimulus most effective when liquid when linked to a certain dose and tactile stimulus most effective when coupled with a different dose for example you have assessed okay um, children who are getting auditory stimulation for 30 minutes okay the progress is good the uh, child's weight gain is good the cardiac responsiveness is good okay so in uh, uh, auditory stimulation for half an hour itself you have got this response but whereas it may take in tactile stimulation it may even take 45 minutes to get the same response which was got in auditory stimulation in 30 minutes the same effect has got only after exposure to 45 minutes in tactile stimulation so in this way also you can identify so which treatment is best and also for which duration of exposure it is best whether it is best for 15 minutes or whether it is best for 30 minutes and whether it is best for uh, 45 minutes or you can affect the same effect which is produced in 30 minutes since one stimulation whereas in other stimulation it may take either 15 minutes or 45 minutes to produce the same effect so this uh, main effect we can uh, assess what is that main effect yes the solitary stimulation is effective or tactile stimulation is effective that is main effect which is effective what is the interaction effect now i have explained no whether what um, stimulus in which particular duration it is effective and uh, again in the same uh, thing in the vice versa also i have told so that is assessed by means of 
factorial design so this is the main advantage or main weightage or strength of factorial design so it not only evaluate the main effect what is main effect ah auditory stimulation is effective ah no uh, tactile stimulation is effective like that after the result you are telling no that is the main effect what is the interaction effect yes auditory effect uh, stimulation is more effective than tactile stimulation because auditory stimulation is producing good infant response by administering only 30 minutes per day whereas the same effect with regard to tactile stimulation we have to wait for 45 minutes per day so in this way we can tell auditory is more superior than tactile so this is called as what yes interaction effects see here the type of stimulation duration of exposure here the type of stimulation you are considering it as a and the duration of stimulation you are considering as b so here this uh, uh, type of stimulation is one factor daily exposure is another factor okay this type of stimulation is one factor daily exposure is another factor so type of stimulation is considered as a under that you have two levels level one is a1 what is a1 yes auditory level 2 is tactile what is a2 tactile okay level 2 is a2 that is tactile stimulation next is daily exposure under that you have b1 b2 b3 so b1 is for 15 minutes b2 is for 30 minutes b3 is for 45 minutes okay so here the combination is what auditory for 15 minutes that is a1 b1 auditory for 30 minutes a1 b2 then auditory for 45 minutes that is a1 b3 similarly tactile that is a to b1 a to b1 means what that is tactile stimulation for 15 minutes then a to b2 means tactile stimulation for 30 minutes a to b3 means tactile stimulation for 45 minutes so in this way you can uh, put the blocks so here also the premature infants are randomly assigned to these six treatment conditions or cells 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. So, the infants you are assigning randomly in each group. Okay. So, uh, in this first condition you are assigning 15 infants. Means here also you are assigning 15 infants. Here also you are ass assigning 15 infants. Here also you are assigning 15 infants. Here also 15. Here also 15. So, this is for example. It is not only 15. As per the requirement you can increase or decrease. The, okay. Next is um, here premature infants were randomly assigned to one of the six cells. There are two independent variables or factors. What are those two independent variables? Yes, factor A that is type of stimulation. Either um, factor A you are having two levels. What are those two factor A? A1 is auditory, A2 is tactile. Next is factor B is amount of daily exposure where you are having three levels. That is 15 minutes, 30 minutes, 45 minutes. So, the above design is 2 into 3 design. What is this 2 into 3 design? Yes, that is 2 levels of factor A and 3 levels of factor B. Okay, 2 levels of factor A and 3 levels of factor B. Okay, see so here you are having a uh, 2 columns whereas 3 rows, right? So, what it is called as? It is called as, it is called as what? 2 into 3 design. So, 2 into 2 design and 2 into 3 design are only commonly used designs. Very rarely it will be going more than um, 3 factors. Okay, what are the statistics tools used here? Yes, ANOVA is the statistic that is analysis of variance. Already I have posted in a video on ANOVA. I, I have given the link of statistics in your uh, playlist. Link in the description box. You can watch uh, ANOVA also. So, what are the advantages? It can be performed with three or more independent variables. Okay, you can perform it with three or more independent variables. Multiple hypotheses can be tested at single experiment. Both main effects and interaction effects can be tested. So, it can be performed with three or more independent variables. You can have multiple hypotheses can be tested. So, you can test more hypotheses in one single experiment itself because you are testing more than three or more independent variables. No. So, here both main effect, this is very very important, this main effect and mainly interaction effect. Interaction effect is only uh, telling the weightage of the factorial design. So, you can do by means of this um, factorial design. So, disadvantages, where, um, statistical calculation difficulty can occur if it is more than 3 
independent variables and designs with more than three factors were also rare. Hope you like this video. If you like my video, please give me a thumbs up, share and subscribe to Science Easy Tech channel. My previous videos link I have given in description box, such as study and card and I card. Or you can watch our channel playlist for more nursing related videos. Thank you friends. Keep supporting to Science Easy Tech channel.